game started. Okay, Lafayette starts off with e4. I could play a Sicilian here. And a classical Sicilian, and not in a while. Oh, well, there's going to be some other kind of Sicilian, I guess. The early bishop to c4. It's not supposed to be great, but it's not as bad as its reputation, <laughs> as someone said once said about the Latvian gambit. Because um, you gain you gain a tempo on that bishop by kicking it. Since he played another pawn move, I can go ahead and play d5 immediately, right? Because my queen is supporting it, and he's got to got to move his bishop. Well, look, he's gaining time on the clock. He's up to eight eight minutes and fourteen seconds already. Let's see. So if I play my knight here, I'll probably pen it. Um, if he plays his knight here, then I have to defend. So why don't I start by preventing the pin? And, uh, oh, he didn't immediately attack the pawn. He went for bishop two, f4. So active deployment of both his bishops. Okay, I'm going to develop the knight now. So maybe I need to put my light squared bishop on e6, and then I can play my dark squared bishop to d6. If I do it right away, then this pawn... Well, it's not loose just yet, because he hasn't played knight to... Um, he has not played knight c3, and he still hasn't. So I can play bishop to d6 right away. And I think I should. And that's a weird move. <laughs> it keeps my knight from hopping into this square, I guess. But it blocks his... Uh, Putting a pawn on f3 blocks his knight. Ah, he's someone who doesn't, just doesn't care. Okay, so let's trade. I wanted to get rid of that bishop. That was my plan. And uh, I don't have to castle right away. Let's see. Can I immediately attack those weak pawns? Like the this pawn here is undefended. I could get my queen in the game at the same time by playing queen d6. Or queen c7 hitting that pawn. And see how he defends it. He can defend with the knight. <clears throat> with knight to... Um, he can defend with knight to e2. Oh, he defends with the queen. Okay. So he wants to hold on to the pawn. Let's bring my knight into the game. So it doesn't look like he wants to castle on the king's side. If I castle, though, he might get a quick attack on the g-file. So I'm going to hold off castling for a little bit. Now I can play knight to um, knight to d4, hitting the bishop, and then threatening knight to e3, rounding up, rounding this up. Well, no, it's not. He can still defend it with his other knight. Well, knight to d4 seems like a good square for the knight anyway. Maybe bishop to e6 and castle queen side then, if he wants to play like that. In the long run, yeah, this should just be <laughs> losing for white, I think. <laughs> his his uh, ragged pawns over here. But I have to survive, so you know, if he gets some quick attack, there is a point. So I can take here with check. I don't have to respond to this threat immediately. So queen takes check. How is he blocking? Can't block with the knights. Has no bishop. He blocks with the queen or he moves the king. And then I can move the, uh, the c-pawn forward. The G pawn. I don't know what I'm saying here. The G pawn. So, queen Check. takes. Why not? Why not take that? Yep. And then um, just push that pawn forward. And let's see. So this gives me an opportunity to trade knights. Yeah, I think that's better than uh, trying to defend the knight there. And then when he takes back, I assume he'll take back with a knight. 
I have to drop back with my queen or move the queen somewhere active, maybe. Let's look for a good square. Oh, he went there with the queen. Okay, so now would be a good time to castle queenside, get um, unpinned. So I've converted my positional advantage into a material one by capturing a pawn. <laughs> and uh, I will see what's next. Let's see. He only has a light squared bishop. I only have a light squared bishop. So if I put my king on b8, I kind of want to play king b8, rook c8, and push the c pawn forward. And so just putting the king on a dark square is okay, I guess. No forks with a dark squared bishop. Man, I just have to watch out for knights coming in. Knight to b5 at some point might be an annoyance. But for the moment, that hits all these dark squares and loose pawn on a7. So for the moment, he's going to pile up there. So let's step out of the way and uh, prepare. Prepare this rook c8 idea. check and uh, he forces an exchange which is funny because those exchanges are probably not uh, not good for him so can I actually trap the bishop for example if I played rook c8 and bishop d7 and then push the pawn forward the bishop would have oh no the, the knight defends it there uh, but then I could play this pawn up I could trap the bishop if I start with a move like this so c5, pawn takes, pawn takes, no, c4, pawn takes, pawn takes, bishop here, b4, and he has to sack, sack a piece there. <laughs> At least my king all exposed. Maybe it's not so great. Okay, maybe I should just trade down. After trading down, that, that bishop trap is a lot more attractive. So I can put my... Put my rook here and then move the bishop with tempo. So he's going after this pawn. Yeah, it's a, it's a good idea. But now the bishop is trapped, right? And without the uh, trouble of having to mess up my kingside pawns too much. Okay, um, oh, that's a good intermediate move, isn't it? Does he actually escape? Ah, uh, no, there's a mate threat at the end. He can't actually take my rook. His bishop is still hanging, and I'm threatening to take his rook. Yes, he can't do that. <laughs> and I'm going, to spot, I'm going to spot the mated one this time after the last game. So anyway, a short game, but, uh, well, maybe there were some good lessons there. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you again soon. Bye.